Once you created and installed your retargeting pixel, it's time to move on and create your very first website custom audience or retargeting list. And the goal of this video is to show you how to do it. So to get started, go back to your Facebook ads account and click on tools. Can you see that? Just click here and then select audiences from the dropdown. Next, click on create audience, select custom audience, and then just go ahead and click on the website traffic. Okay, great. As you can see, that's the place where we will customize our retargeting pixel. So let's take a look at this little dashboard. On top, you can see the name of your retargeting pixel and there's also a green dot next to it. This green dot indicates that your retargeting pixel is working fine. In case you see a red dot, that means that your retargeting pixel is broken. All you will have to do is to fix it, so don't worry about it. If you see a red dot here, just go ahead and reinstall your retargeting pixel. Then there is a section called website traffic. This is probably the most important section of the entire customization process. So let's click on it. As you can see, there are five different options to choose from. The first one is anyone who visits your website, then there's the option to create a retargeting list that includes people who visit specific web pages, people visiting specific web pages but not others, people who haven't visited in a certain amount of time, and last but not least, there are some custom combinations. The first option is pretty simple and straightforward. So you can create a retargeting list that includes every visitor who visits your website. It's pretty specific so you can say hey you've been on my website how about liking my page how about how about taking a look at this offer how about becoming my email subscriber right so basically you're targeting every visitor of your website who has an account registered on facebook it's pretty specific but you can get even more specific by selecting the second option so you can say I just want to reach out to people who visit specific web pages. In other words, you can say, I want to re-engage only with the visitors who read a particular piece of content, a particular article, or I just want to reach out and re-engage with visitors who viewed a particular offer or who made it to the squeeze page. So what you can do by choosing this option is targeting only a specific set of your website visitors. Then there's the option to create a retargeting list that includes people visiting specific web pages, but not others. Use this option if you're working with any type of funnel structures. Let's take a look at a very simple example. You're sending visitors to a squeeze page and the squeeze page is the place where you're asking your visitor to submit his email address and exchange for his email address, he will get a free report on how to get a thousand fans on Facebook within 24 hours with just $5 or how to get a thousand Twitter followers within 24 hours for free. In case he opts in, he will get automatically forwarded to something called a thank you page. The thank you page will just say, Hey, thank you for providing your email address. Here's the free report that you requested. So you just acknowledge his previous action, say thank you and just deliver on your promise. However, what if a visitor makes it to your squeeze page, takes a look at the free report and goes like, no, I don't want this free report. In this particular case, a visitor would make it to the squeeze page, but not to the thank you page because he didn't opt in. What you can do now is to create a retargeting ad and reach out to the ones who made it to the squeeze page, but didn't actually make it to the thank you page. So you can just re-engage with them, tell them, hey, you didn't opt in, reconsider your decision, or you didn't like this particular free report on how to get a thousand Facebook fans. How about a new report on how to get a thousand YouTube subscribers or a thousand blog readers? So you can just forward them to a new squeeze page you can offer them something different that's still related to their desired end result but it's just something different then people who haven't visited in a certain amount of time this is great if you're running a blog 
and you have some kind of content strategy in place, by selecting this option, you can re-engage with blog readers who haven't been on your blog for a certain amount of time. So whenever you're looking for a visitor to come back over and over again and read or engage with what you have to offer on your website, then select this option here. And then there are some custom combinations which you will not use in 99% of the cases. Make sure you understood the core concepts that are behind these four options here. Again, don't worry if you didn't understand any of these core strategies I talked about. We'll take a look at core strategies in the next video. What's the goal of this video is to show you that you will have to set up this section here and that you understand a little bit the technique behind each and every option and what actually happens. For the sake of simplicity, I'll just go ahead and select the simplest option, which is creating a list that includes anyone who visits a website. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and select a domain here. Just selected AdBaker, which is a German social media marketing blog. Then, this is also a pretty important section. You can specify the number of days people rem will remain on your retargeting list after they visit your website. You can say, I want to keep visitors for only a day. You can even say, I want to keep them for 180 days on my list. So you can basically re-engage with them 180 days after they have been a visitor of your website, which is great because that's actually like six months. That's basically half a year. So the big question is, how many days should you keep a visitor on your list? Again, this completely depends on your retargeting strategy. In the next video, we'll talk about this section again. Last but not least, you have to give your audience a name. Choose something descriptive. Make sure that you take a look at your audience that you created today in like three months and you still know right off the bat, okay, that's an audience that includes visitors who made it to AdBaker and I'm keeping them for 30 days on that list. So what I would do in this case is just to write something like general website retargeting 30 days. If you're done, just click on create audience. And we are done. Thank you for creating a custom audience. Your audience is ready to use. That's the basic setup process of basically every custom audience.